So, Danny, you know that uh, that new pill that's on that market that you can get at extraordinarily high prices? I've been looking for it everywhere, man. Yeah, so um, so I found out what my power is. Um, it's a little yeah. awkward. What is it, man? You got that pistol shrimp or what? No, so... Hi, buddy. Do um, you know jellyfish? Uh-huh. You know how, like, their tentacles are, like, super, like, tentacly and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get any of that. I basically just turned like transparent. Like it's not even invisible. Like I just turned transparent. Like you can still see me. I'm still there. <laughs> what you just get pale? I just basically you just yeah. turn into a. <laughs> I just turned into a white dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, t- I took one of those pills and I just turned into a white guy. Uh, man, it was pretty weird. Yeah, I was gonna go. I don't with, know like, what kind of animal. <laughs> I was gonna go with like a walrus kind of and say that like I, I yeah. grew like <laughs> yeah. the largest penis in the world or something, and then I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with something less. I get that orca ween, dude. Yeah. I took that pill and immediately got that orca ween, dude. I saw a video one time of like some Sea World trainers at, like gathering a sperm sample from an orca whale, and its wiener was like half of its body. It was like a pink tentacle, dude. Link down below. We'll leave a link down below yeah. for that for you guys turtles, if you want to see it. Turtles have like. Like appendages. Oh, I've seen it, dude. Yeah, I've seen it. We had a we had an office turtle that was like a flasher. He would basically like show people his dick, and nobody knew what was going on. We thought he like we thought his organs were coming out. Like he'd been attacked by one of the fish in there. It turns out it was just his wiener. Yeah. By the um, way, critic in the yeah. comment, we're now talking about uh, animals. In, in, we are now talking about turtle wieners. This dude. this episode is not um, about a movie. <laughs> Unfortunately, no turtle wieners in this movie. What's going on, everybody? Critic in the common man here. Uh, we, as you can tell by the thumbnail, watched the very popular Project Power on Netflix. I don't know how I feel about it, man. I yeah, watched I'm not it. Sure. I was kind of, yeah, I was expecting a lot and I didn't hate it. But let's jump into it, dude. So this one obviously just came out by the time you guys are watching this video. Hopefully, everybody's gotten a chance to see it. What do you think of Project Power? Uh, did you have any expectations for it going in? And then did it meet those expectations or were you a little bit let down? I really didn't expect much from this. Um, it was kind of in the same boat as like Bloodshot. And yeah. I don't it like I, I saw the trailer and I was like, OK, it's it's another superhero movie where like they get their powers through some sort of like genetic modification or something i thought the premise that it was it comes from like a five minute pill and it, like each one lasts exactly five minutes that's a little weird to me like i was like what the hell is this yeah. premise why five minutes and how are you sure about that and i don't know right it's exactly five minutes for everybody it felt a little silly in just the premise idea and everything and when i saw them the, the the trailers and everything i was like sure let's let's give it a shot like the the only thing that i felt was it saving grace is that i love jamie fox um yeah jamie man. fox is he, an incredible he, actor he is he is really good he's he also up has there an on incredible, the list incredible singing voice too yeah he does i've heard him sing he's he's definitely up there on the list unfortunately i didn't think that he was quite enough in and of himself and he wasn't by himself joseph no. Gordon joseph gordon levitt was in this too he's got i'm just gonna call him like jgl for the sake of having to do that tongue twister name but he was in this too a big cast it was also studded with a lot of these people that seem to be making the rounds in films now like you get casey neistat in this like you were talking about mgk yeah. is like a big actor in this there was a lot of people um that kind of popped up in this and it's like seriously like i it kind of is getting to the point where it seems like if you get famous for anything netflix will just sort of put you in their original yeah. films now like yeah. whether you're an actor or not so we only um, have like 20 it, more followers to go and then we'll be we'll be in the next movies yeah there you go man exactly like dude like how far away are we from showing up in a movie and just talking shit about it the whole time like we do on here <laughs> we're just like yeah i don't like it the director's like all right get this guy out of here <laughs> who brought this guy in here um I don't know, man. It it, I think it kind of relied a little bit on the fact that there was Jamie Foxx and JGL in this, and I don't think that was quite enough. Yeah, no. The premise, the plot was a little bit far fetched, and it was cool. Uh, like the idea of it was cool, but I thought if they were gonna make it like, okay, these powers are based on like each person gets an animal, and like your different animal is who you are. Like I wasn't really getting that in the beginning at all. Nope. Like the flame. Um, where like, the hell did the flaming thing come from? Yeah. Like what animal is that? Like yeah. oh, yours is a fucking mole trace. Like we just <laughs> got we like we got yours from a fucking Pokemon. Like okay. Like I don't really understand how that would be in like an animal property that he can just combust. Or why is J or why is uh the cop bulletproof? Yeah, like, I guess maybe his is like, oh, I get, like, mine's from, like, a turtle or something. Like, but I don't like, know, and I have, like, a... Sh- I'm pretty sure if you pull, it, pull a, a bullet on on a turtle shirt, you're going to... 
nothing <laughs> would die for sure. Nothing. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that there's an animal in the animal kingdom that's that bulletproof, unless he got like elephant skin. I mean, I think you have to have a pretty powerful rifle to like puncture something like that. I don't know. I I just thought it was kind of weird how they took the transition and like these powers everybody was getting were all of a sudden based on animals. Yeah. Whereas in the beginning, I because I, I liked the idea that everybody's power was unique. Mm-hmm. Like everybody takes this pill. You don't know what your power is going to be, but when you I take it, idea. you get like something. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is cool. Like it's kind of like superhero esque. Mm-hmm. Everybody has their own unique power. But but then of course it's like oh, and some people just blow up. When they take this, like, okay, like, I don't... I mean, it, I, it I, I can understand that just because, you know, you never know what is going to be the effect of, you know, this on your genetic system or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's fine. But, yeah, overall, the premise was just a little weird and strange. And some of it made sense. Most of it didn't. And then, like, why did everybody believe that Jamie Foxx's character was the one that was supplying the... the why do they call him the major oh no that that's right we did see that he was kind of like ex-military right 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 um i don't know it just kind of felt like they were reaching as far as the story and they were just trying to find some reason to show off these cool special effects which is you know it's whatever like the the movie was what it was basically I, i didn't really i got about as much as i expected from the movie yeah i didn't think the plot was unique enough or crazy enough to where it was enough to like to really make me love it. Yeah, the idea that there's this guy manufacturing pills that give everybody powers. I can't think off the top of my head of any other movies that are doing that, but it almost didn't really seem super unique. It's like they're almost taking like Limitless and any run of the mill superhero movie, and they're kind of combining them into this story. And I will say, and I never thought I was going to say this coming out of this movie, and I may get some hate for this, or we may lose interest with some people, but. Dude, I didn't think uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was that great in this. I kind of thought his character fell flat, and I don't know yeah. if it was because of like him supposed to have that accent or or who he was playing. His but character just I didn't, didn't really much. like his. Like, he yeah, I didn't really like his character all that he much. He was the this. same character at the beginning and at the end, is what it yeah, was. Agreed. Like they they hired Joseph Gordon-Levitt again for the the factor that you know like hey let's. Let's let's bring in some big name actors to see if we can sell this movie more. That's all it was. I thought it was a little bit funny that the girl's name in this, the main girl's name was Robin, and then Joseph Gordon Levitt is like her sidekick. I saw that same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like she's the sidekick to him, and he's he's Robin in, in yeah. the the old Batman movies. But I don't know. What it, what did you had... like about the movie though? I liked the idea that everybody's power was like unique, so you didn't really know what you were gonna get. I liked the casting choices for this. I mean, for being kind of a middle-of-the-road Netflix film. Uh, again, seeing MGK in this, MGK is not a bad actor at all, but he's kind of showing up now in a lot of these films. MGK. You're getting some YouTube stars in it. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly, he was the guy who played, like, the dude in the beginning. Um, it was Newt. Remember Newt at the beginning who, like, combusted? Yeah. That was Machine Gun Kelly. He's like a famous rapper, basically. And he's not just a rapper. He's like kind of a rocker, too. And he's been in some other films, but he did not get famous for being an actor. Like, he was famous well before being an actor, and he's transitioned into film. And that's great. It's not like everybody can only be good at one thing. Mm -hmm. And these guys have a network and the ability to bridge that gap. So good for them. I would do the same thing. If somebody came to me and was like, hey, I saw you in your podcast. I'd like you to be in a movie. I would 100% do it. Um, I just, you know, as long as... Netflix or whoever is casting these people for the fact that they're going to be the best people in the role and not the idea that, oh, if we put Machine Gun Kelly or Casey Neistat in this, it's going to bring like the millennials and in and the, make them yeah, want to watch it kind yeah. of thing. Um, Which I don't, I'm not going to say that they were bad in this. I mean, look, Casey Neistat was just basically a face. It's yeah. not like he was really trying to, no. they were trying to make him a main character in this. And MGK was fine. I thought he did a good job acting. But I don't know. I, I liked the casting choices for the most part. Obviously, you can't really go wrong with Jamie Foxx, and I didn't think you could go wrong with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, although I didn't really love his character in this. Mm-hmm. And then Dominique Fishback as Robin was really good, too. So the casting was not bad at all. What about the special and, effects? Oh, I will say I thought the special effects were pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I, I thought they were pretty good. What about you? I, I thought they were great, especially at the end when like the water is all boiling and stuff. Like That was... That was epic. That was pretty yeah, that was cool. cool. Um, yeah, I mean, like there, there was some good. There was good writing, you know, here and there, you know, kind of sprinkled in. Um, the, most of it was pretty generic, but I, I did enjoy some of the writing, and I thought that her rapping was fucking awesome. 
Um, yeah, it was cool. The the music in this like throughout was yeah. good. It felt very modern. It definitely had a very modern. Yeah, like it wasn't feel. a bad movie. It was it was just what you'd expect from watching the trailer. You know, like if you watch the trailer and you're like, that looks cool, then you'll probably like this movie. Like yeah, and I don't think that I came off of watching that trailer and was head over heels excited about I watching this yeah. movie. I mean, it looked cool. I think right now we're so desperate for like good content to be put out there because nobody can go to the theaters and because we're all stuck at home and because streaming services, Netflix, Amazon are such a big part of our entertainment right now. Like they're the core of our entertainment right now, other than maybe video games or, you know, whatever it is that you like to do that you can still do right now. When we see something new come out, especially on a Netflix, because the Netflix original content has been so good lately. Like the past few years, all the Netflix original content has been so good. When you see a big movie come out, uh, you can't help but kind of drop everything and jump in and watch it. Yeah. Uh, And this one, you know, don't get me wrong. It's not a bad movie at all. I just didn't I wasn't blown away by it. It's not one that I'm like antsy to watch again. Yeah. You know, Um, but, you know, maybe for a younger crowd, like who knows it? yeah i mean it it, like i said it was exactly what i expected it to be and um i don't see them i don't see them making a sequel of this let me say that i feel like this was kind of a one-off they made this it wasn't the strongest plot but it was enough to make a pretty cool original movie they got a good cast to do this i do think the characters could have been a little bit better yeah um but it was there and i mean i think just the plot of it being oh there's this guy who's got this drug he's gonna come and test it in new orleans well why would, first of all, if that was you, why would you test that in America where the law enforcement system is probably better than anywhere else in the world as far as like their funding and their capabilities? Like go to a third world country and test this stuff where like, you know, you're not going to get caught. Yeah. If your whole idea of testing this is you just want to distribute it to people and see the reaction, go to somewhere where the police force has no funding and where there's not really a lot of kickback and then go test it there. You know, it, it just, the idea that these people would come to america and do this kind of stuff i don't really buy that i think they would have gone to somewhere where it would have been a little easier to get away with um and it probably would have made for a little more exotic of a like yeah of 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 an an experience yeah yeah i get that i get that dude did you know that the guy who played biggie so um yeah like the main villain guy did you know uh dude do you know who else that is the big show no i have no idea it's going to blow you away when I say it. That is the dude who plays Xerxes in 300. What? But he was, I, so, I only he was ask, so skinny. I only ask that you kneel. Dude, I swear to God, that's the guy who plays fucking wow. Xerxes. Isn't that weird? That, yeah, like I saw that and I was like, that that is strange to see him as basically anything else. Because you'd assume he'd be like seven just feet be his tall voice? and stuff. I guess it could just be his voice. I don't know, but that's that was Xerxes, man. Wow. Uh, voice or not, it's just strange. It was strange to see him in this. But this has very much that that Netflix cast. You know, it's like yeah. we're going to get one or two really big-name people, and then we're kind of going to throw in a bunch of, like, pop culture people that are, like, somewhat celeb. Like, we're going to take a bunch of B-list celebrities yeah. and throw them in there with And I, 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 unfortunately, I think we're going to see more and more of that because— We're going to see a lot of that. It's just it's the it's the age of of the technology and everything like that's that's what we're gonna see you know if you're famous on the internet you're probably gonna get deals to be in certain movies in order to try and sell them and, and have them appeal to other people. Um, yeah, I think it's a dangerous game that these directors are playing to cast people and and I get it for for a Netflix original movie where the funding is not that crazy high and it's kind of like they're not expecting it to win any Academy Awards. You know, they're not expecting this movie to go and, and win a bunch of Oscars or Grammys or whatever. They kind of know. They're putting it out there because it's their business to create content and put content out there. So any original content they can come out with, people love. Yeah. But I think it's a risky gamble for people who aren't necessarily protected by that Netflix shield to go and do that. Um, did you know also that like in a lot of the Star Wars movies, they're even doing that? Like, And they're kind of just creeping in. Like, I know a bunch of the stormtroopers. Like Casey Neistat, yeah. I'm pretty sure, was a stormtrooper and stuff. Yep. And okay, like you don't see their faces, but it's a dangerous game. There's man. a lot it's of... a dangerous game to play. Yeah, there's a lot of... Um other actors i can't remember any of them but i wonder if they also do that to kind of throw people off when they're looking because you know people nowadays will look through who was cast as who and they'll, they'll try to guess you know like oh this yeah. person was casted so they might be this jedi from this tv series and i think they might do that to kind of throw people off the scent of who is going to be playing what in movies 
Um, that could be. Or just, you know, for the hell of it, you know, just, you know, an actor comes by to visit the set and you're like, hey, you want to be a stormtrooper today? Sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, I would. I'd be like, I'd be all over that. That's my dream, dude. I would love to be in a stormtrooper outfit just for, you know, of course. for a week. Of course. It's just, do you think that that, let me ask you this, and I, and I it's, a, it's kind of a slippery slope of this conversation even because I'm not saying that like, okay, somebody who's famous as... Uh, as a singer can't be a famous actor. We've seen this in history. People have always bridged that gap where big time celebrities in one thing end up becoming big. I mean, look at The Rock. We were just talking about yeah. him. He was a famous wrestler, now one of the biggest actors, if not the biggest actors of all time. Look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was the most famous bodybuilder in the whole world, and now he transitioned over into movies. I mean, we've always seen and this. A governor. Big actors coming coming from everywhere. So I get it. I just, again, it's the same point where as long as we're casting people for movies based on their ability to play the character well, not based on how popular yeah. they are with you know with kids or whoever it is these days. But, I mean, this one had Jamie Foxx, phenomenal actor. It had Joseph Gordon-Levitt, phenomenal actor. Um, the girl who played Robin, phenomenal yeah, in this. She and I'd never great. heard of she her before. She did great. She did. So I wouldn't say that this one fell into that trap of, of the movie being ruined because they tried to pick the wrong people for the casting. Um, I just, it was definitely on the nose who was in this movie outside of the, like the three main characters. It was very like upfront. You know, I, I really liked that scene, uh, towards the beginning when, uh, Robin and, um, and Jamie Foxx, what's his name? The major, when the major, major and Robin are in the yeah. truck and, you know, he's asking her to go inside and she's like, I'm just a kid. And he was like, you are not a kid. You're out here like slinging pills. Like you gave that up. You, you like, <laughs> you made that choice. And I thought that was fucking good. Yeah. That was such a good scene good writing and then she's just crying and she's like yes sir that was that was a great scene um i think the writing in that scene was solid and i i think generally the the writing was strong but the story itself was just lackluster you know it just didn't have much yeah Um, it had all of the right pieces to be a little bit better film than it was but the plot wasn't strong enough to carry this to be uh, an academy award winning film it's like i mean it's it's cool the idea of it is cool there's there's this guy who has pills who has gives people superpowers but it kind of seems like everything we're watching now is about people either having some sort of superpowers it's that whether they're innate craze, or whether man. they're given it's because yeah. marvel set the yeah. bar and everybody is trying to jump on that like hey if we make a superhero movie or a movie about people with powers maybe we'll get to be one of those ones that makes millions and it's yeah. Like, just stop, okay? Marvel was an anomaly because they, they built the world well, over 20 years. Right, and they're they're building a world based on, you know, a comic book comic book series in which Stan Lee built, and, and he was building that world And it already forever. had a fan base is the thing, and DC is trying to Huge rush it. Yeah, base. DC is rushing Huge it, which is why base. they're failing. And um, yeah. everybody else is kind of like uh, Umbrella Academy. They're, everybody's just trying to kind of jump on that, like, superhero bandwagon and try and make it unique, but nobody is succeeding at that and it's it's just it's kind of the boys i would say is the only the only content out there superhero wise that i'm really really enjoying right now is probably the boys and it's probably because the only other like really dark superhero content we get is deadpool Mm -hmm. and it's not like deadpool's putting a movie out every year no so you're kind of still filling that void of like really realistic dark superhero content with the boys whereas like the only thing you're getting that from is deadpool but like good superheroes that are you know there to save the day dude that is flooded cinema right now because it doesn't it's the they're the only like original stories left yeah. they're going okay let's go to these comic books and dig from there because all these other stories although great books have already been you know depicted in movies and have already been adapted into film so let's go to the comic books now um and the only difference you're seeing is like the really dark films like deadpool um or the boys you know on amazon this is also a really good series that i'm looking forward to this one wasn't in your face superhero-y. No. And I mean, even the powers, I think because they only get them for five minutes, it's not so much about the powers as much as it is about like the drug business that's going on kind of behind the, like in the shadows. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because the way that they were slinging this power, like it would have been interesting to see this pill have some sort of like addictive qualities to it. Rather than it being like, I just want more power, you know, like have it uh, affect people in a certain way. That way it kind of creates a darker story. But they, I don't know, they created this like lower income setting 
for this movie, but no reason yeah. as to why. Um, like anybody could have been slinging it, I guess, because it's you know like they're they're trying to like push the pill on the street, so it had to be somebody who's from the streets or whatever. But I didn't quite get that part of it either. Jamie Foxx kind of explains it when he's in the car with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Frank, when he's in the car with Frank, uh, Art. Art is Jamie Foxx's name, okay. and they just called him Major. But when Art and Frank are in the car together, and he's basically telling him what's going on. He's like, your boss is being controlled by somebody. Yeah, I remember that. You know, and he's kind of letting him go. And he's basically saying, he's like, why would they be testing in New Orleans, this and that? I just, I didn't, again, I didn't really buy that they would be doing that in New Orleans, yeah. why do it there? If if you're, what what is the point of of getting this drug in the streets like this? You're just trying to see how people are going to use and abuse it. Yeah. But then you're also trying to turn around and sell it for millions of dollars to the highest bidder. It, it, it was just kind of lost on me a little bit. Yeah, the whole plot just kind of feels like it was being pushed on us and didn't really make a lot of sense. But you know, then again, it's it's a movie where the plot really isn't the the thing that's selling it. You know. We're, we're watching it for the for the special effects, for the cool powers and all that. That's that's yeah. the selling point of this movie, and and I think it kind of shows. And I don't know what the scores are for it, but I'm sure that the scores are kind of reflect that. Um, I will say that I really liked Jamie Foxx's power at the end, like that scene when he's like strapped to the chair and he just has his hands tied behind his back or whatever, and he's just like, "Hey, you, yep. do you know what the most dangerous animal in the world is?" And he doesn't. All he has to do is talk about the pistol shrimp and how it like boils the water around it because it moves so fast and then just shows the guy the pill in his teeth and we don't even see the guy let him out but the guy let him out because yeah he's like fuck that yeah he's like i don't get paid enough for this so is the pistol shrimp the same thing as the mantis shrimp like are those the same creatures i have no idea because i know like i know the mantis shrimp like hits things really fast but I guess maybe it's a different thing. I don't know. I need to look that up and see if the pistol shrimp and the mantis shrimp are the same thing. I'd like to think if I was to pop one of those pills, assuming I didn't just explode, I'd like to think that I'd be able to, like, levitate or fly. That's what I would want. I'd, be, I'd have some sort of, like, bird power yeah. or something like that. Yep. I thought the part where the dude was transparent and robbing the bank was kind of stupid. That was, like... Like, okay, you're in... I have the same issue. Like, like... From what direction, like, it's all directional. So, like, somebody from, like, this perspective might not see you, but somebody from this perspective is going to be like, that's just a blobby mess. Like, it doesn't make sense. And he's, he's invisible, but the bags he's carrying are not. And as he's, like, kind of warping in and out of visibility. So you're telling me he's going to take this pill and then just run around naked and try to escape with these they bags. They also like, uh, Ken dolled him. There was no, there was nothing between his legs. They just yeah. gave him the Ken doll. Like, what? Like, are you wearing underwear? Yeah, dude, we want to or... see a transparent wiener. Where was his wiener, I don't, man? That was the stupidest power, in my opinion. I thought that was so... Well, it was just... I mean, it was a pretty predictable power. Okay, there's a guy that can go invisible. He's got some squid So DNA what does he do with it? He of can... course he's going to rob a bank. Right, he's going to try to rob a bank. But then he's just running through the streets, like, naked. You're right, they can doll him. You can kind of still see him. But, dude, you're going to have to drop those bags at some point. They can just follow the bags that, that so you're stupid. carrying. And, of course, he's running He's running at supersonic speed somehow. He's like the fastest man alive sprinting yeah. around in the nude. I don't know. To me, this one, the, the plot wasn't quite strong enough for it to be a phenomenal movie. The casting was from more or less there. I didn't love what they did with Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character. Um, and it just kind of ended up being a middle-of-the-road movie for me. It was kind of middle of the pack. I, I wasn't thrilled with it. I was fairly entertained while I was watching it. The special effects were there. Um, some of the acting was there. I just didn't think it was phenomenal, yeah. but it was a fun movie. It was it was something new that Netflix put out to keep you kind of interested, to give you some original content. Do they expect it to be the best movie ever? Probably not. Is it the best movie ever? Definitely not. Mm -hmm. um, entertaining. Probably one of those movies where you watch it once it was and just, that'll be it. Was it. Fun. I, you know, it was just fun is all it was. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, I don't regret watching it. So this one did about what you would expect. If you had to guess what the scores were, what do you think they would be? A six or a seven. Per, oh, like percent? Or are you talking 60 or 70? 60%, between 60 and maybe 70%. Yeah, you're basically right on. Critic score was 60%. Audience score was actually pretty low. It was 50, 51%. Um, so I kind of see it. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a little bit of a letdown. For what we were expecting it to be, it was a little bit of a letdown. But uh, where do you rank this one in regards to that? What did you think? Uh, I'm right there uh, with, with the critics. I give it a 6 out of 10. It's fun. It set up a kind of a larger world a little bit the the bad guys like he was able to just walk right in i don't really understand that um 
like this is like we don't know where the pill came from like, but i am assuming that it's like multi-million dollar companies that are creating this thing and he was able to take them out pretty much by himself there's just a lot of it that doesn't make sense i i like the idea that you know there's people out there who can just get all these powers and you don't really know what it is i like that i actually really really like the idea that you never know what your power is going to be because it's based on your genetic you know code or yeah, whatever that was the most creative cool. part of yeah. this movie by far but then you know it would have been more interesting i think to see this same pill used in like maybe a military setting or um you know see mercenaries using it or something but like to see people you know a, a girl selling it to like teenagers and shit like i just it was it was just very predictable overall like the entire movie was just predictable um hi buddy there there wasn't much about it that made me feel like it was a great film you know Agreed. and it sucks because they cast two of the biggest actors um that they could have you know with jamie fox and, and joseph gordon levin it just didn't make sense that to have them why bring them into this film when they are not going to elevate this film in any way George, um oh my god i keep saying Jorsef. Jorsef. joseph gordon levitt i thought was a pretty big letdown in this movie considering his his acting chops and what i expected for him coming in jamie fox and uh dominique fishback carried this thing big time i mean they put this movie on their back Art and Robin yeah. carried this thing big time. They they kept my interest. The two of them kept my interest. Everybody else I thought was... They had great yeah. chemistry. They were... Obviously, Jamie Foxx, you know, he needs no no qualifications. As, or he, he, he needs no, like... He doesn't need anybody to come in and say if he's a good actor or not. You know he's a phenomenal actor. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that Robin's character was great. They carried this movie. They kept my interest peaked in this movie the whole time. Yeah. Everybody else I thought was kind of disposable. I didn't love it. I'm right there with the scores, and I'm there with you. Six out of ten for me as well. I, I, you know, it just, it is what it is. I didn't think it was anything all that phenomenal. It's not bad. Was kind of expecting, it wasn't bad, but the plot just got really boring really yeah. quick. Um, and then it, it just turned into a generic action movie. And how many times do you see the big boat at the dock, and you got to get on that? Like, I just, a lot of the stuff, I, I thought felt so like, I felt like it was that, the intro to Rush Hour is what it felt like to me. Yeah, it's like, you know, the, the creative part of this movie being everybody's power is unique, but then you don't see the powers all that much in this. Um, I will say, though, uh, Biggie, the main bad guy, him, like, getting gigantic was hilarious, dude. <laughs> His head was, like, as bigger, like, way out of yeah. I was like, what is going on? Um, I was a little bit let down. Yeah. Six out of ten for sure. But that's it, man. I mean, other than that, it, it, it is kind of what I guess we expected it to be, an average movie that was fairly entertaining, not going to win any Academy Awards here. Um, but that's it. I mean, if you guys if you guys think differently, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. We're very interested to hear, good or bad, what you, whether you guys loved it or hated it, or if you're somewhere in the middle. Drop a like if you kind of agree with us here. And if you're just watching this video for the first time, welcome. Uh, we'd love to have you subscribe. Uh, give the button a click down there. You know what to do. You got anything else for this, Chris, or should we jump into our current event? No, I'm gonna no. I'm gonna go transparent or grow a big dick, whichever one I decide well, to. Uh, or just just explode, yeah, just turn yeah. into a white dude. I'm gonna just, turn into a middle aged right. white dude. Um, all right, man. Let's jump into our uh, let's jump into our current event. So obviously, the DC universe is really coming together here in the next couple of years. The trailers have been dropping for Batman. There's big news about Black Adam with Dwayne the, Rock Johnson, the Dwayne the Rock Johnson playing him. There's a lot going on right now with the DC Universe, obviously with the fandom and everything that's been dropping a lot of information. The cast for the next Suicide Squad movie just dropped, and it is loaded. Yeah. Like, it is loaded maybe more so than any movie I've heard of in a long time. Let's talk about this. I feel like the last one was Let me run two, you th- but the, go ahead. Like, give, me, give me some names. The last one was two, but I don't, I, can't, I don't know if we can say it was like this. Let me run you through some of these names. Pete Davidson, Margot Robbie, John Cena, Idris Elba, Nathan Fillion, Elise Braga, Taika Watiti, Michael Rooker, Storm Reid, Joel Kinnaman, Peter Capaldi, um, Sean Gunn. Dude, the list goes on and on and on. It's insane. But, I mean, this is... Sean Gunn? This is a... Yeah. Oh, duh. Yeah, Sean Gunn is going to be in this. Because James he, Gunn is directing uh, it. Right, right. Dude, this is loaded, man. Do you think that what what are your ex- expectations for this coming Oop. up? And do you think that Uh-oh. this uh, do you think that this is going to be enough to kind of carry this movie back and and make it um, kind of save this save this universe a little bit? So obviously, Marvel has kind of thrown their punches. 
the end game is out. You know, the, they're kind of in a waiting period right now until their next series of movies comes out. Are people going to kind of be revitalized in this between Batman, Black Adam, the new Suicide Squad? Is it going to be enough? And is a cast like this what they need? So here's the thing. I love the Marvel movies, okay? And I think one of the biggest mistakes that Disney has made was dropping James Gunn for that, you know, 30-day period or whatever before they decided to. In those 30 days, DC made the genius move of hiring James Gunn for their next movie. So there's a huge potential for the next Suicide Squad, this one, to be incredible and to revitalize because James Gunn knows what he's doing. And I think he he may very well make a movie that is going to turn DC around. I don't know. That could also be putting a lot of stuff on him because he also made shit like Slither. So I don't know. Um, (laughs) But as somebody who wants DC to be good and has been, you know, keeping an eye on the movies, Shazam, that was okay. It was funny. It was a push in the right direction as far as, like, DC's movies yeah everything else sucked except for wonder woman uh and and i mean justice league the 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 superman movies the new batman movies they were all terrible terrible the bat they had they had so much potential in their hands i mean i i sorry to interrupt you let me just say this really quick i feel like marvel movies overall the marvel universe i think is a little bit more lovable but i think that dc has a big thing going with superman and with batman and if they can figure out how to make good superman and batman movies they can absolutely turn this race between you know marvel dc they can completely flop that around and they've really dropped the ball with the batman and with the superman movies that have been coming out in the past few years what blows my mind is that have you ever played like the marvel or not marvel uh God, what are those games where... Oh, like the Capcom games? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How is it possible that those games have created a better storyline for the Superman and Batman and the Joker and all of them than a film, than multiple oh, films? Oh, oh, you're talking about the... Um, 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 not Uncharted, obviously. The un, un, uh, Unjustice or whatever. You're talking about the like fighting games, like the Tekken style yes. games, but it's with yes. all the yeah. What the fuck are those called? Where you have like Superman died, and then he became he like he woke up and became evil, and Isn't it like injustice? I don't remember. All right, you keep you keep going, and I'll look it up. But just so here's the thing: you have Shazam, you have yeah, injustice. Okay, um, you have Justice League, you have the Batman, all those movies that were just terrible, to the point where I didn't. I haven't seen Suicide Squad. I didn't even want to give it a shot because I just expected it to be bad. And from what I heard, it wasn't that great. I heard that the second one was better. Uh, It'll be better. Wait, second one? Is is this the second one? This is the second one, yeah. So Suicide Squad has... So Will Smith was in the first one. Yes. I think Suicide Squad will actually surprise you in that it's not as bad as you were thinking. I'm not saying it's anything like The Avengers, but it was fairly good considering how bad a lot of the, the other movies have been. It just, I can't, it just blows my mind. I can't fathom how they have multiple shots, multiple chances across all of these movies to create something that is as good or could be better, darker even than the Marvel movies. And they drop the ball every single time because they're rushing it. They're rushing the entire process because they're trying to, they're trying to compete with Marvel who has had 20 years to build this story rather than take their time and build it up in the in the, you can spend a few years building up you know the batman movies and superman and, and all of them but you have so many characters that they just kind of like threw into um into the into the justice league movie some of them haven't even made it into other films before they were just like by the way here's a character because marvel was able to do it but yeah. we've grown to expect that from them so i don't know man there's it's a, it is just mind blowing how they are able to uh, to to not get a single hit with those, and and so I'm just I'm not sure that this is going to be enough for me to get interest in the DC movies. You know, it's almost I'm almost worried it's going to be too much, dude. He's getting big. If you guys have yeah. been watching these videos and you remember little Tenzin making his intro a few a few weeks ago, he's getting huge. I worry that it's going to be too much, dude. I I really do. It's like sometimes. 
sometimes when you try to put something like this together, it's going to be a little crazy. I mean, when you look at the lineup, you can go online and see who all these characters are are playing, respectively. You can get all of their, their characters that they're going to be in the movies. Suicide Squad is is kind of like the Avengers, but instead of the Hulk and Iron Man and Captain America and these these heroes that everybody knows because they've been set up in their own movies, it's these it's these I feel like it's the movie for like the comic book reader. That's really who yeah. this is for because you're getting like Bloodsport and Weasel and you know Deadshot and people like characters that unless you read comics, you don't really know who they are. So I want props the to Toad from X Men. Yeah, like props Wait, to Marvel, Marvel for kind of bringing a lot of their superheroes into the spotlight and just making them popular regardless of whether you. Uh, he's like, nope. what do you have to say? What do you, tell us? Tell us, little Tenzin. <laughs> give us your opinion. <laughs> Oh my god. Um it's it's kind of hard because with these movies it seems like these are much more the DC side has become much more for the the comic book reader and I think they kind of back themselves into a corner with that where Marvel just became the pop culture thing to go and see the Avengers movies or go and see Iron Man or go and see Thor or whatever it is. Um I do worry that this is going to be a little too much. I mean, we'll see. It's got it's definitely got the acting chops in it to be a great movie. Now, when you bring all of these people together, is it going to be a little overwhelming? Is it just going to end up being stupid? I don't know. Um, but DC needs something bad to turn this around because they're hurting, dude. They're hurting yeah. right now badly. And I don't blame them. I mean, you you get Christopher Nolan's Batman series with Christian Bale, which is arguably one of the best franchises of, of the last you know couple decades. Dude, The Dark Knight is one of off. the best movies ever. Agreed. Like, yeah, and then just, all of a sudden it says, "Hey, make this." But then also, like, they choose Ben Affleck to come in and try and play Batman. And it's like, dude, they're just they're hurting it's themselves not just that, here because the Batman costume was also stupid, and somebody looked stupid, at that and went perfect. Stupid. They're like, yeah, and we the like plot, the block, the block look. Yeah, stupid as hell. And and like you said, it just felt rushed. It felt like they saw the Avengers movies coming out, and one of the executives, you can just see him at the table. Well, what the hell? Where are we at? Why aren't we putting something like this out? And they say, well, hold on, we can do Justice League. And then they just made it so bad that now people are kind of scared to watch these films. Yeah. And people are scared to come back and watch them. But yeah, I, I know. I hear you. But you need to watch Suicide Squad, man, because it's it's better than you think it's going to be. Um, not a great movie, but not a bad movie. But dude, they make, a, they make a Suicide Squad and then they go and make, you know, Harley Quinn and the fantabulous Margot Robbie's crop top and, you know, Thirsty Dude movie. And it's like, okay, well, this movie sucks ass. So yeah. like, where are we at was, with was, these? Are you talking about Birds of Prey? Yeah, whatever it was called. Like, most ridiculous, um, over-the-top movie. I heard that movie sucked. I didn't even see it because I, I, I knew it, it was going to be bad. Um, um, but I don't know, man. What do you think? I think that in order for them... To, what You know what they should do is make a Batman, like Terry McGinnis Batman, with, like, Batman Beyond, <sighs> and make, like, that Batman because those that one was so good, and have, like, an older Bruce Wayne. And just forget Dude, about uh, everything that happened... <laughs> With the rest of DC, like I just, if you know that the yeah. best movies, the best superhero movies that came out for a while were Christopher Nolan's Batman movies, why not hire a director like him? Why not hire somebody who is going to, or the same writers, like find somebody who's going to make that same tone in in a in a Wonder Woman movie or uh, the problem is, dude. The, but the problem is those Christopher Nolan Batman movies. His whole thing was he wanted to make it feel real. He wanted yeah. to make those movies feel like it could actually happen. That's why none of the you didn't see anybody with crazy superpowers or anything like that was and he, there wasn't anything in that movie that couldn't have been done in real life other than like maybe Batman um, like begins where he like is you know getting his powers and all that stuff like the the League of Shadows and whatnot that might be a little far fetched but those movies felt so real and you can't have that movie but then also have Aquaman and you know like weasel and all these crazy characters that just they don't really blend so but that's I mean, why i say i say double down and make it really different like almost go like the into the spider verse route and try to make like like go really far the other way but but try to do something to make sure it's good like what about like, like a young batman franchise iron man did it i mean i iron man felt real like i mean yeah it was a little yeah. weird with like you know, but it was all tech and you know like he was able to do it and i think they just need the right formula where iron man kind of yeah. had that and and i think the dark knight and all those movies were better than the iron man movies but oh, hell yeah but they they didn't find uh they just couldn't find a way to continue that whereas 
from Iron Man moving forward, they continued that they took the superhero and they created something that felt realistic. And you could absolutely do that with the Flash or, you know, any any of the of the people like Aquaman could have easily been something better. But like all they did was like, well, let's just put all of our budget into it was Jason so bad, but, but dude, Aquaman's always been the kind of joke. He's always been kind of the butt of the joke with the superheroes. Like his power is that he talks to fish. You know what I mean? Like it's all you got to do is the boys made that joke too. Yeah, right. With with uh, the deep and everything. You know what I mean? It's just he's always been kind of the butt of the joke. I don't think they ever expected Aquaman to be the big heavy, he, he for him to be the new Batman or something. I just yeah, I hope that what we get with the Batman with Robert Pattinson and then what we get with these new Suicide Squad movies, I hope they're phenomenal. I hope we get some new franchises that we can all love. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but we'll see. Yeah, Agreed. we'll see. All right, man, that's it. That's today's current event, Suicide Squad cast. Go and look uh, when you have a minute and see who all these people are playing. It's very interesting. Uh, I have high, high hopes for this. But that's it. If you're still watching us, uh, let us know what you think down below of the current event um, and give us a thumbs up. So that's it. That was the Critic in the Common Man review of Project Power and our current event today, of course, talking about the DC Universe and where it's going. Chris, you got anything else to say for the episode today? Um, I have a tiny dog that is chewing at my leg. Destroying uh, your feet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I might need to visit a hospital now. So, Very good. Tenzin, the new Batman. Wow. All right, man, let's get out of here. That was Critic in the Common Man review of Project Power. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're still with us, subscribe, drop a like. We really appreciate it. Chris, we're out of here.